Good day and welcome to another virtual concert of the 2020-2021 season with the Rochester Symphony. Our quintet of pieces today I think will be mostly unusual, though we have some rather familiar composers as well. We start, for example, with Antonin Dvorak. Dvorak was known as a very nice person. He had a lot of friends. And in the early days of 1886, he made a special friend with a chemistry student who also played violin. Now, he admired the young man's violin ability, and he asked who his teacher was. It turns out he knew his teacher too. So he decided right away to create a trio for two violins and himself on viola. Viola was Dvorak's favorite instrument. He was so enthusiastic about it, he completed the terzetto, as it's called, in a week from January 7th to 14th, 1886. Now, we're going to hear the two interior movements, numbers two and three from that terzetto. Now, number two is called Larghetto. It's peaceful and quiet, though it has some energetic moments, too. The third movement, you usually find a scherzo, a fast dance, but in this case, he makes it even faster and more furious by using the Czech folk dance, the furiant. The furiant has a little bit of a waltz in there for calming effect as well, but together they produce a great contrast, Larghetto and furiant. To play this terzetto of Dvorak, we have two violinists, Andrea Sieber and Jerry Casper, and violist Sarah Lockwood. Here we go with Dvorak.
In our last virtual concert, we had an unusual piece by Beethoven for the odd quintet of oboe, bassoon, and three horns. He wrote that during his early days in Vienna at the age of 22. The piece we're about to hear is from a few months later when he was 23, and it's for an unusual combination as well, two oboes and English horn. In this case, he was honoring one of his mentors, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mozart had passed a couple years before, and a few years before that, he had created one of his most popular operas, Don Giovanni. Here we hear one of the most popular tunes from that popular opera, La Ci Darem La Mano. Put your hands, let us put our hands together here. Now, it came from Don Giovanni, which of course is about a not very nice man as far as ladies were concerned, and here he's trying to get to know better a young woman named Zerlina. It doesn't work out, but the duet is beautiful nonetheless. Beethoven took that duet and created variations on it for this trio of reeds. We have on oboe, Alan Bishop and Dana Maeda, on English horn, Tom Hineker, as they play variations on La Cidarem La Mano from Don Giovanni by Mozart, the variations created by Beethoven.
William Grant Still was a real pioneer. Born in 1895, he, as an African American, was a true explorer who had many firsts. For example, he was the first African American composer to conduct his own music with a major orchestra, in his case, the Los Angeles Philharmonic, in 1936. The pieces we're going to hear by Still are Panamanian dances he created for string quartet in 1948. We'll hear the first and third of these. The first is called Tamborito. As the name implies, it has a drum-like feel. You can actually hear on the cello the pounding of the knuckles to create rhythm at the beginning of the movement. Then the second movement we hear, which is the third in the suite, is called Punto. It's much lighter, smoother, more languid legato. Two real contrasts here in the Panamanian dances. Our quartet is the Rosewood Quartet. Violinist Elise Parker, other violinist Claire Loudon, and Claire's aunt Liz, Elizabeth Loudon, our principal violist on viola, and Claire's other aunt, Diane Loudon, on cello. Here's the Rosewood Quartet with William Grant Still. <laughs> Thank you. 
Augustine Lara, who died in 1970, was a Mexican composer who spent some time in Spain. Now, he wasn't a concert composer primarily. He wrote film music. He wrote Latin American band music. He wrote songs. Perhaps his most familiar composition was a song he wrote while he was living in Spain called Granada, a real popular one with Spanish tenors, notably Jose Carreras of three tenors fame. In any case, the piece we're going to hear, he originally wrote for a Latin American band. He called it La Marimba. He wanted to talk about the instrument, the marimba, and he wanted the Latin American band to imitate that sound. Here, today, we don't have any problem with that because we have not one, but four marimbas to play it for you. Tom Schneller, Jeff Bina, Jim Knudsen, and Will Kemperman join to create a wonderful blend as marimbas always do. Now look carefully at the instruments. You'll see they look quite a bit different. Some of them have long pipes underneath, some shorter pipes. Usually the longer pipes play lower notes, but the designs even of these instruments are different. Note especially the third one from the left, Jim Knudsen, who has no pipes coming down at all. Why? He's playing an electronic instrument. He's playing the bass line, the bass marimba. And frankly, the new electronic version sounds a lot richer, deeper, and truer than the original natural version. Here's where electronic actually works better than natural. Here are four marimbists doing La Marimba by Lara. Our grand finale today is perhaps the most familiar music on the program. It's by Antonio Vivaldi, born seven years before Bach and Handel, and known as the Red Priest in Venice because of his flaming red hair. He spent most of his career teaching at a school for unfortunate girls. Well, not exactly an orphanage, but frankly, the illegitimate offspring of the nobility of the region who supported the school. Now, of course, he wrote a lot of his pieces as concertos, solos for his students, but we think that he probably wrote this as a solo for himself. It's really difficult. The four seasons are well known. Three movements, four seasons, 12 movements altogether. We're giving you just summer, but we'll give you all of summer. I think it probably has more notes in than any of the others. Vivaldi was kind enough to put into his scores some description of what was going on. In the first movement, he says that man and beast droop under the heat of the sun. And then we hear some 
bird songs. I think you'll recognize the cuckoo, maybe the turtle dove and the goldfinch. And then the shepherd gets a little fearful of what he hears as possible winds indicating a storm in the distance. That's the first movement. In the second movement, the sleeping shepherd is awakened by distant thunder. And finally, in the third movement, it's all storm all the way. It's a torrent of rain and a torrent of notes for our valiant performers of Vivoli. Now we have on the solo part, our concert master, Michael Sobieski, and then a string quartet, our president and CEO, Amy Lindstrom, plus Elizabeth Sobieski, and then on viola, we have John Vettel, and on cello, John Osborne, and then to pull it all together on the harpsichord, Jan Metzen. That's our sextet to do this, and you may have remembered when Michael did all four of the seasons, a couple uh, seasons of our own, ago. Here's Vivaldi's Summer.
That's a grand finale. Summer by Antonio Vivaldi with Michael Sobieski and his colleagues from the Rochester Symphony. Thank you so much for joining us for this concert today. And thanks, big thanks, too, to Sean Fagan of Fagan Studios and for his videography, and Nick Hamilton of Carpet Booth Studios for his wonderful sound. Without them, we couldn't do this at all. But we want to let you know that as we go into now the holiday season, we won't be giving you another virtual concert. But keep alert to your social media and to your emails, and you may find that we'll have a few holiday greetings from home from our musicians in the chorale and the orchestra. I hope you'll tune in to those. By the way, the series has been dubbed by our president and CEO, Amy Lindstrom, I'll Be Home for Christmas, which is where I hope we'll all be. Thanks for being with us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and make great music a part of your life. Thank you.